situazioni Quei momenti fra di noi I distacchi e i ritorni Da capirci niente poi On February 6, 2007 a Beechcraft 200C VQ2 took off on North Caicos Airport on at 18.40 hours for a 54-mile flight. The pilot suffered probably spatially disorientation due some alcohol consumption. The aircraft crashed into a shallow lagoon approximately one nautical mile southeast of North Caicos Airport. Wreckage was spread along a trail that extended in excess of 370 meters along a track of 220 degrees. The aircraft fuselage had come to rest comparatively intact, although lying in an inverted attitude. Evidence from the accident site indicated that the aircraft had struck the water in a nominally upright attitude, with only a moderate rate of descent but at relatively high forward speed. From a detailed examination of the wreckage and the circumstances of the accident, it was concluded that the aircraft was structurally intact and probably under control when it struck the surface. The evidence indicated that each engine was producing power throughout the short flight and at the time of impact. Although anomalies were found which suggested that a possible power asymmetry may have existed, this should not have been sufficient to cause the pilot serious control difficulties. None of the passengers described an obvious problem with the aircraft during the flight and most remained unaware of the impending crash. The circumstances of the accident suggested that the pilot became spatially disorientated, to the extent that the aircraft diverged from its intended flight path and reached an irrecoverable situation. The environmental conditions were conducive to a disorientation event, and a post-mortem toxicological examination showed that the pilot had a level of blood alcohol which, although below the prescribed limit, was significant in terms of piloting an aircraft and would have made him more prone to disorientation. The evidence indicated that the pilot had probably started a recovery to normal flight, but too late to prevent the accident. However, his actions had the effect of reducing the descent rate and placing the aircraft in a nearly level attitude at impact. This lessened the impact damage and helped preserve the fuselage structure relatively intact, increasing the passenger's chance of survival the investigation identified the following causal factors. 1. The aircraft adopted an excessive degree of right bank soon after takeoff. This led to a descending, turning flight path which persisted until the aircraft was too low to make a safe recovery. 2. The pilot probably became spatially disorientated and was unable to recognize or correct the situation in time to prevent the accident. The investigation identified the following contributory factors. 1. The environmental conditions were conducive to a spatial disorientation event. 2. The pilot had probably consumed alcohol prior to the flight, which made him more prone to becoming disorientated. 3. The flight was operated single pilot when two pilots were required under applicable regulations. The presence of a second pilot would have provided a significant measure of protection against the effects of the flying pilot becoming disorientated. History of the flight Background to the flight The pilot flew part-time for the aircraft operating company, whose main operating base was at Providenciales Airport, the main international airport of the Turks and Caicos Islands. The pilot resided on North Caicos, and it was a common arrangement for him to fly a company aircraft there at the end of a working day, once it had completed its scheduled flights. On these occasions, the aircraft not necessarily VQ-2 would normally remain at North Caicos overnight before recommencing scheduled operations the next morning. However, the intention on the evening of the accident was for the pilot to take a private party of five passengers from North Caicos to Grand Turk for a political function, returning early the next morning. It was reported that the passengers were being carried gratuitously, hence the pilot and aircraft operator considered that it was a private flight. The flight from Providenciales to North Caicos On the day of the accident, VQ-2 flew on seven commercial sectors finishing operations at 15.15 hours in Providenciales. It was refueled at about 17.00 hours. Fueling documentation indicated that the aircraft main tanks were filled to full, 
which would have provided in excess of three hours flight time. During the afternoon the pilot, who had not been scheduled to fly commercially that day, traveled as a passenger from North Caicos to Providenciales in order to collect VQ-2 and fly it back to North Caicos. VQ-2 took off from Providenciales at 17.35 hours on board were the pilot and a female passenger who also lived on North Caicos. The aircraft arrived at North Caicos just seven minutes later, two minutes after official sunset. The passenger recalled nothing abnormal about the flight, the aircraft or the pilot. The aircraft was parked on the small apron at North Caicos Airport while the pilot went home to collect some personal items. One of the intended passengers saw the aircraft arrive. He remained in the vicinity until the pilot returned and reported that the aircraft was unattended in the intervening time. When the pilot returned, four of the five passengers were gathered near the aircraft, and the last passenger arrived soon afterwards. The pilot, a local man well known to the passengers, appeared to be his normal self and in good spirits. As most inter-island travel in the Turks and Caicos Islands is by air, the passengers were also familiar with the operator's aircraft and used to traveling by air. Some had flown frequently on VQ-2. The pilot supervised embarkation and gave an emergency briefing. One passenger reported that the pilot made a mobile telephone call, which he presumed to be to air traffic control at Providenciales to notify them of the proposed flight. Prior to seating himself at the controls, the pilot told the passengers that they may expect some turbulence the aircraft taxied onto the runway at its eastern end and along its length for a departure from runway 08. It was about one hour after sunset and outside the airport normal operating hours, so there were no ATC personnel on duty. The runway lights were operated by the operator station manager. The aircraft took off at 18.40 hours. Soon after takeoff the aircraft was seen to start a turn to the right which was consistent with its routing to Grand Turk, some 54 nautical miles to the southeast. However, the aircraft reached a relatively large angle of bank and started to descend. The descent continued until it crashed with significant forward speed into an area of very shallow water. The aircraft broke up on impact, with the fuselage section coming to rest nearly inverted but comparatively intact. All those on board survived the impact sequence with varying degrees of injury. However, the pilot died before he could receive specialist medical treatment.